There it is. There we go. I feel like hey. I'm signing my life away every time that yes. oh, you're being live streamed. <laughs> yes, you are. And I want to say, welcome to Crashing Game Night. My name is Matt Diorio, our Bruce Wayne. Tonight, I am joined by that, that, our, that self that self appointed Bruce Wayne. Self appointed Bruce Wayne. Self appointed. Yes. <laughs> hey, um, I'm joined by our version of Nightwing, the beanie one Gerard Barrera. What's up, nerds? How you doing? How how's it going? Thank you for joining. Thank you for viewing. And uh, I, I think he gave you Nightwing because his first name is Dick. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, hey, how's is, it going? and that, ladies and gentlemen, is Bumble the Boy Wonder, our version of Robin, the baby face. But, but which one? Am I like Bruce's son version of Rat? Are you Damien? Robin? Are you uh, like where no. I grew up in under Rosh Al Ghoul's? Ooh. Mm. No, or you're not that are quite, you? You're not uh, or that are evil. you Tim Drake? I would say he's more the Tim Drake. I'd say you would Robin. go. I'd say you would go the red uh, red hood route. route. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty I fair. Yeah. I, yeah, I'll take that. I like because red the red hood. hood redeems himself. Yeah, and that's that's. Um, oh, does he? Oh no, I was. Uh, yeah, he does. Which Robin? I was is just gonna that? go that's, evil. <laughs> it starts with a J. Uh, um, good question. Um, Google. Oh man, uh, help us out, Google. <laughs> All right, so Killing we got it. Jason Todd. Jason Todd, yes, Jason thank Todd. you. That's the one I'm thinking wow. of, Jason Todd. Totally blanked. Uh, Jason totally Todd. blanked on that. Yeah. Anyway, I would say you're more of a Jason Todd. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll take it. Yep. So, anyways, um, we are Sans, our Matri D of Services tonight. Um, however, uh, we'll get to it here uh, tonight. Here, we got some. Scheduling changes are going to be happening over the next couple of weeks. So we'll talk about that at the end of the show. How you fellas doing? Well, as we talked earlier today, I'm happy just <laughs> to be on. Thanks to <laughs> stupid work. Uh, so, I'm doing okay. I had a solid wait. week of work, but I'm looking forward to the weekend. I'm really looking forward to it. Wait, are, What's... You, are, do you have a three-day weekend? Are you done with your week? No, no, no. I, I still, have, oh, I still okay. have tomorrow, but I'm looking forward to the weekend. Oh, yeah. It sounded like you were done with your week. It's like, I had a solid week. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just ready for tomorrow. <laughs> I already expect the worst. And what's funny is you guys had bad days at work. I had my first normal day of work. In like so, three weeks. Good. Since That's the awesome. 12th of April. <laughs> yeah. So a month. So, Jesus. Almost, an entire month. Fi it's finally, people, day. people are uh, checking, no, rechecking, and things are going I right. I, I think, I think we might have fixed the problem. So, oh sweet, okay, cool. We've had two days of stability. I'm, I'm good. So, back but yeah, to let, yeah, hopefully back to normal. Good, good. Um, but anyway, so let's let's just get into the news because there is an absolute ton of news that's broken, um, over the last several days and whatnot. So, um, it was announced that the uh, the Winchesters, which is the prequel to Supernatural, has been picked up uh, by mm. CW for seasons. So, um, I'm not and currently casting. Yeah, and right. yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it, you know. But we'll see. It can I'm end okay because really, really you know um, the the original two uh, are are producers on it, and uh, they, I think they said in well, one it's Jensen, it's Jensen Ackles and his wife. Daniel. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're the producers. producers on it and they're, um, they're Jared, overseeing it. Yeah. Jared Padalecki is overdoing Walker and yeah. now it's pretty cool. It got picked up Walker <laughs> independence. So, um, which, uh, <laughs> also, um, he got Eccles to uh, direct a few episodes in his. Yeah, he season. did. That's pretty cool. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then, I don't know. I mean, if, if the story is like super, super prequel, I would like them to reuse the actors of young, um Dean and why am I blanking on his name? Yep, I know you're talking, but they're um they're going with different actors and stuff for the younger counterparts for Winchester. No, I mean, yeah. but I mean use the original actors so they're they're older by now by at least like five years. Mm. And 
and go, well, they, no, go because the series, the series is focusing on their parents. So the parents oh, are going to be in their oh, 20s. Yeah, yeah. So the kids aren't even born yet. Yeah. Really oh. at that point. So, so it could be good. It could be bad. Who knows? We'll see. But um, we might as well. Leaning on bad. <laughs> we might as well like <laughs> fill out the trio. Um, Misha Collins, who played Castiel. Um, okay. He has been cast as Harvey Dent. For the Garth, the Gotham Knights Ooh, TV series that has been picked up casting. by CW. That's Dude, a very he's gonna good do casting. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna do that. What he's gonna do that character justice. Honestly, oh, yeah. yeah I think bring... he would be. I think he'd be an amazing Two Face. Yeah. If they once he get great, to that route, great Two Face. Well, that, I mean, he's, he's already he's got Harvey the raspy Dent. voice down yeah. Yeah, from right, Castiel right, and everything. Yeah, he's, he's Harvey Dent. <laughs> He's, he's Harvey Dent, gonna... but eventually, yeah, he's you know they're gonna go two face with. Oh it. yeah, so that, I was I already, be... I was already thinking like, oh man, he's gonna be a great two face. Oh yeah, I think he's gonna be great. Like, he's gonna bring something fun yep. to the character, but yeah, he'll do it justice. So let's let's talk about Gotham Knights as in the game, because um, it is gonna have a little bit different storyline than the TV show because the TV show is gonna follow Bruce Wayne's adopted son, who is framed for Batman for killing Batman along with the children. <laughs> of iconic villains which i love oh, the premise wow. of. wow i that's really a, like the, okay. the premise that's of that. an original story like that's bad. way different than what we saw in the teaser um well no that's for no the, no the TV that's for show. the tv show so oh, okay the game is yeah. gonna be a little different um yeah the game is all uh surrounded around the court of owls so let's uh let's look at the, <laughs> the, the versions um, so you're gonna have the standard version, which you're gonna get the base game, and if you pre-order it, you're oh. gonna get the 233 custom bat cycle, which is what they've been advertising. You've got the deluxe edition, which will do the same as the standard, um, but you'll also get the Night Watch by Jim Lee Transmog, uh, the Beyond suit styles. So all of them have the suit styles of Batman Beyond. Okay. Uh, you're gonna get salvage to build new gear. You're going to get boosted gear, an exclusive emote, and then three exclusive suit colorways, which that's their version of Destiny's shaders. Mm-hmm. And then you've got, um, let me go Just back to it. Shot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, being it's decided it doesn't want to do anything here. I'm just going to go pre-order now. Go back to it. So, um, And then you've got the Gotham Knight oh. version. That statue looks good. That statue looks pretty damn yes, good. Yes, it, it does. does. It, it does looks look pretty damn good. Damn, man. That so, is cool. Oh, man. The red hood looks sick. Yep. So you're getting the deluxe edition. You're getting think, the Gotham about, Knights exclusive new guard statue, which was inspired by Jim Lee. Okay. The Prometheum new guard transmog. Jim Lee certificate of authenticity. Augmented reality talent key. And oh, Gotham City City of Bridges collectible map. So okay. just for grins, I because I do not know how much this is going to cost. Um, uh, well, currently unavailable. Go figure. Damn of course, it. collector's edition's already sold out. <laughs> I just want to see what the price was. Three hundred dollars. Oh, I kind of actually think that's that fair. Is, I think yeah, that's fair because that is really? a custom. It's a custom yeah. statue, and it's from Jim Lee. But I'd say that's the, the biggest thing, though, thing. We didn't the. Arkham Knight wasn't three hundred dollars, and look at that statue. But that's mm. one statue that lit up, and it was, yeah. Uh, you're comparing apples to oranges, dude. I mean, okay, so, well, that's true because the a- the Horizon Forbidden West version that you got was three hundred, wasn't it, or was it two fifty? Two fifty? No, no, no. Uh, two sixty, two eighty. So something. Okay, there. so okay, so it's on par with some of the other collector's editions out there, but, um. I think the main selling point is the authenticity certificate and the statue mm-hmm. being made by Jim Lee. Uh, that will... statue alone, I, like just by being made by Jim Lee, I would say would at, yeah. at the least 150 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair Maybe enough. 200, I would say. I think I'll probably, I just need to a, see a little alone, bit more yeah. about it because it is designed, it is being marketed as a multiplayer game that you can play solo. So... Okay. Yeah, solo but, and co-op. So here's here's my only reservation with that is, um, is that I don't want it to be Avengers, because Avengers was sold the same way. It's a multiplayer game that you can play solo. 
I mean, so, I've seen I've seen clips of gameplay that it, it looks nothing like Avengers. Well, no, but I'm talking about how you level up your characters. If you have to go back through all the missions with different characters to level them up, you know, that sort of thing. Um, Is there an RPG aspect to the game? Yes. Yeah. Like uh, uh, armor, sure emotes, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, people are getting a lot of like mobile vibes with the uh, customization menu. Yeah. Okay. Like straight up, it look it looks like a mobile game, so a lot of people are kind of scared. Like, and it's, that's it's kind of headed the direction of um, the hindsight of what Avengers became, mm-hmm. which was yeah. like j- pretty much just a a, a money a, a, a market, like yeah, a DLC pretty market. much and micro uh, transaction micro transaction. Thank you, thank yeah. you, and uh, that's what they're 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 yep. hinting at the vibes that uh they're getting from uh, so, Gotham Eye from that i am i'm cautiously optimistic for it i'll put it I that mean, way i like that i am they, interested in it but i need to i like more. that they're definitely expanding on stories because like i saw a clip that explained that red hood is like officially trained to higher abilities and has an airwalk jump which is sick looking because he like mm-hmm. generates a circle in the air and jumps off of it and just completely yeah, he, keeps he jumping acquired out. it from the uh yeah the that the yeah. the pit razal girl's pit yeah yeah, yeah so. it was residual magic that he now like possesses it's soul magic yeah. uh it's new in the comics it's like very new oh okay yeah yeah so for me i'll just i'm i will probably end up getting it but i may not get it at launch um i'm gonna be a little bit more cautious on this one this one i'm gonna be my, like honestly with the cost of games now being 70 dollars a pop i'm being more cautious on what i buy day one mm. because I still, honestly, I still have a lot of pre-orders out right now that yeah <laughs> still i have time to play my game so like yeah. i'm good where i'm at yeah yeah um so uh something that's not good where it's at even though they could probably do without the the title of it but uh FIFA and EA are breaking up after 30 years of marriage. Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah, I heard that one. FIFA has now decided that they do not want to renew the the licensing with EA. So EA is uh, going to be calling it EA Sports FC. Okay. So okay. is it FC football being, conference? Uh, football club. Football club. So, okay. Yeah, that's what they're. That's what a lot of the okay. professional teams are. It's whatever. FC. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised um, if uh, FIFA went to 2K. You know, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, everyone's speculating who's going to snag up that that license. So because that's uh, a big one and it does make money. It has it, it has it does. Its following. It does. I mean, it's yeah. been out for 30 years. I mean, it's just like Madden. I mean, now, Jerry, I got some news for you from the EA front. Hey, uh, Dead Space. What? Ooh. January twenty seventh for three, right? No Dead Space way. 3? That's dead. No, that's the uh, remake. The remake. That space that they're doing. The straight up oh. reboot, dude. It's getting a whole yep. overhaul. Yep. Okay. No way. January. Mm-hmm. Sweet. They haven't shown anything else. They just oh. said, "Hey, here's a date." And honestly, given they sh- that they show, there, there's a uh, short tech demo, a gameplay demo, but well, it's yeah, mainly but... to show. Uh, like the, the smoothness and like what it's going to yeah. sort of Still. look like. But it, yeah, it's cool, man. Um, so with that, I know there's a lot of Dead Space fans out there. So January, you got That's some time, awesome. but Sweet. so time to add another pre-order to your list. Yeah, um, <laughs> but that's fine. Yeah, like you said, it's in time. Yep. I got time. Do you so, ever uh, like map out like or on the calendar when all your pre-orders come in so you don't oh, get the, like the, the oh i've I got three this same week <laughs> oh the oh, moment like i pre-order. Elden Ring and horizon <laughs> okay. yeah the moment i pre-order i Honestly, i put it in the calendar right now the only things i have pre-ordered or that i would pre-order is god of war right now oh i'm waiting for that for that, uh, that that's a collector collector's gonna happen uh Probably if you if on... you get the opportunity to do it. That's true. Like, I just, really hope I, I, I really hope you beat all those bots and yo, yo, everything. Yo. You know yeah. a collector's gonna happen. One way right. or another, 
collector going. You know what? I'm I'm good. I mean, with even it. if you even if you do it eBay and hit, oh, yeah. hit the oh, marked yeah. up price. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I am. I for, I for got a word in... for Uncharted. Absolutely. Like Uncharted, absolutely, I would. Um, it's it's already like, just considered God already. But God of War, I I really enjoyed it, but I'm good with my modern icon statues. I'm mm. good as far nope. as my God of War stuff. I'll take so. it. I'll even take the icon right. statues. Scalpers, um, if you're boom. listening, you, your prime person to go after is Jerry. Yo, I, I'm just saying. I, I'll just say this. You got me, but like, come on, come on, be gentle. Like, come on. I'm I'm willing. <laughs> so let's like let's negotiate. Hey, at least offer uh-huh. him a chocolate covered pretzel while you're at it. <laughs> and ju- and just a little loop right. to 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 set himself <laughs> up too. Anyway, so. <laughs> Uh, Capcom had their uh, uh, financials meeting. Love the mall rats reference. Yes, <laughs> I knew you'd understand it. Um, so, Capcom is looking at um, releasing forty some odd quote unquote SKUs between now and the end of their fiscal year. Um, they're forecasting thirty seven million to be sold. Oh, okay. Million, is this for a, a specific game? Oh, they're, no, they're talking like. Overall, in general, titles. how many general. Street Fighters can they come out with? Well, no, here we go. So, and they want 10, 10 million units coming Forever? out of the new titles and then 27 out of their catalog. But here's oh, I'm sorry, dead, dead, dead or alive at. volleyballs, too. Dude, how oh, no, many? They, they don't. No, that wasn't Capcom. <laughs> That's not Capcom. I know, I'm just no. kidding. But there are a lot of those yeah. so ridiculous amount. I mean, let's let's talk about the games, and it's going to be right up next to what your comments were, though, on like how many different things can we do. So, you have the Capcom Fighting Collection which comes okay. out June 24th, which that one is supposed to have like Puzzle Fighter and all that okay. with it. Um, but honestly, I'm not going to spend $40 just for Puzzle Fighter. No. no. As much as I enjoyed that game on PS1, nah, we're good. Then you've got the DLC for Sunbreak, for or sorry, for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak comes out for the Switch on okay. June 30th. Okay. You've got Capcom Arcade Second Stadium, which is that one where you had to buy each individual game uh, July 22nd. Now, this is where I say, how much can you milk something? Because you've got Resident Evil Reverse. I don't remember which one that is, but that's coming out for PS4, Xbox One uh, sometime this year. Resident Evil 2, the 2019 version, is getting a PS5, Xbox Series upgrade. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Resident Evil 3 is getting a PS5 upgrade three i don't remember three yeah that's the one where jill's running from the net from nemesis the whole game oh god yeah that's right okay yeah. okay resident evil 7 is getting a ps5 upgrade oh mm. now okay. from what i'm gathering though these are being listed as new titles so it's not going to be like an add-on upgrade to what you already own it looks like oh what did theo just go jump into that we can hear playing oh let me turn it down i'm sorry (laughs) what'd you you jump into cat quest 2 oh lord (laughs) his obsession (laughs) anyways um and then you've got exo primal i don't know what game i haven't really seen anything on that that's a ps5 title that's next year um, still within their fiscal window. Pragmata, same thing. Street Fighter Six, though. There we go. Can be announced. You know, <laughs> there it is. Sermon. We got now, Resident Evil. We got Street Fighter. Keep yeah, them exactly. coming, baby. <laughs> so they did share some sales figures. Uh, Resident Evil Village has now sold over 6.1 million copies. Oh wow! It was it was a good game. Which it everyone has said game. it's it's a great game. Yeah. Um, You've got Monster Hunter Stories 2, uh, yeah. Wings of Ruin, which was, that was, you know. I, um, I, I heard a lot about that one, too. You know, DLC, that was 1.5 million copies. Monster Hunter Rise mm-hmm. on the Switch sold 4.1 million units oh, or wow. a million copies. So that's not bad for being a, a Switch and PC title. And then Resident Evil 7 has uh, sold an additional 1.8 million copies during their last fiscal year that's saying a lot that's, for, that's surprising for seven you know um hmm. so with that well i mean honestly capcom what you doing 
They're reaching. They're doing they're, their thing. They, man. they they must be bleeding. They're 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 doing their thing. Like you, you know, they're always just doing their thing. Yeah. I'm and, really uh, surprised we didn't hear any Tekken news. <laughs> Tekken is uh. Tekken is not Capcom. Yeah. It's That's not Namco Capcom. Bandai. Uh-uh. No. Oh, that is Namco Bandai. Yeah. Oh crap. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, uh, talking about doing their own thing, Nintendo during their their stuff reconfirmed some titles so uh as also we saw kind of disappointed no hmm. uh remake news for devil may cry one two or three well mm. eh. but those are niche games it does have its they are. Quality, yeah but it's I a would, cult I would following like, i'm part of that cult. i would really like those games i mean i did enjoy those games but i mean i don't necessarily think it needs to be re-released um so mm. nintendo <laughs> We own it. We all know Nintendo. I mean, no. They, what is it? What is this company? I've never heard of this. And they're playing. Right <laughs> um, anyway, so they did reconfirm some launch windows. So Mario Strikers Battle League, which got a new trailer this past week, that's coming out June 10th. Um, oh, cool. Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, which is the their version of Hyrule Warriors, uh, is coming out mm. June 24th. Oh, Level yeah. Live, that kind of remake is coming out July 22nd. Xenoblade Chronicles 3, July 29th. Splatoon 3, September 9th. Okay. Uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is still slated for this year. Ah, oh, sweet. Damn, man, Mario, we gotta catch up. Mario and Rabbid Spark of Hope is slated for this year. Man, I'm okay. gonna buy a couple of those. I still haven't given any of those a try, but you said it was pretty decent doing Mario and Rabbids. Mario right? and Rabbids? It's oh, fun, yeah. bro. Dude, I love that game. I already yeah. know I'm gonna I have to buy a couple it. copies. So a couple um, copies? Have, yeah, my dude, my nephew, my, uh, a couple nephews, of my nephews yeah. like love that game, and oh. I'm still hearing about it. So, Cody likes it. Cody likes playing it. He's got yeah, his own. Cody copies, likes so. it too. Um and then you've got Bayonetta 3. Okay. Is slated for this year. <laughs> okay, and, that, TBD and, on that. We'll see. Possibly. We'll see. I mean, yeah. but, but, uh, it's too bad Jason um, Jason isn't here know, to right? like wet himself a little bit. Parade. <laughs> um, but friend of the show and member of the CGN family, Tommy Earl Jenkins is playing a voice in that game too. Yes, so that's awesome, Tommy. Um, and then, um. Legend of Zelda 2 is still looking at being spring of 2023. Okay. It's probably fair. And then on the TBA, Metroid Prime 4, which honestly... Yeah, it hurts. It, it hurts, but you might as well just give it to me on the next Switch. Which True. I think it's probably going to. But here's, here's the thing is Nintendo is kind of worried though right now because Why? they look at when they went from the what is it the ds to the 3ds they didn't have the same success true and then from the wii to the wii u they did not have success so they're worried that whatever the next thing is after the switch may not keep the momentum well they better make a significant change because i feel like we just do this DS to 3DS wasn't a significant change. Wii to Wii U wasn't necessarily a significant change. What they need to do is keep the Switch, just come up with a Switch Pro that's fully backwards compatible. Yeah. That's it. Don't mess with the formula. Just give us, just give I us was, a. I was about to say kind of the same thing. Like, uh, listen to what the fans want and give me 4K. Like, do, yeah. And a better processor that doesn't have frame rate drops. That's it. 4K is gonna be really difficult. I mean, I, I mean, unless you unless you're I mean, completely would, removing I, I the handheld say, aspect of Switch for the Pro. I would say you, you make it 4K. No, you make it 4K for dock. Less. Oh, really? That's gonna be that's so. Gonna that's gonna be lot, really bro. difficult because you're gonna end, end up needing would, to have yeah. an external yeah. GPU inside of the dock in order to do that. I would say it'd be easier if it was undocked 4K. Handheld 4K. Oh no, I'd that's okay even harder, it. dude. Oh, how, are you gonna harder? Get, how are you going to get a hefty GPU to do 4K in a small form factor like friggin' the Switch? There's no way you're going to get 4K out of that. Oh, no baby. way. Uh uh-uh, uh, no way. You ain't getting that. Uh. Unless it's well, going to be like uh. as thick as the Steam Deck. 
<laughs> for oh, a God, switch. No. Please no. And that doesn't get up to 4K either. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Oh, bummer. I honestly, uh, the the pro needs to do things that the fans have been asking for, but it it also needs to differentiate differentiate itself enough from actually the normal switch for the it Steam to be Deck successful. Doesn't even say what it does. <laughs> Resolution is twelve eighty. No, it's twelve eighty by eight hundred pixels. Okay, sixteen by ten, which is the ratio. screen. But I mean, still the. The GPU that's in that, I mean, it still heats up a ton for supporting that uh, resolution and the games that it's doing. So, I mean, like, you, you're not going to get anything good for if you're trying to squeeze it into the same size as the Switch. Yeah. No way, yeah. no way you're going to be able to do that. I also, at the same time, is I'd be okay with if the Switch Pro was maybe just a standalone unit that it wasn't necessarily handheld handheld but you need to have a better cloud saving feature so i could just basically pull my save file down in to the switch or have something auto updating into my switch and then i could take the game on the road with me that's you mean like not... how, like how well cross save worked with um playstation and vita how well i mean it didn't it didn't work it... the greatest it, it worked okay. pretty darn good though, especially no, for its time. In, especially for Final its Fantasy, time. I had to go into Final Fantasy X and tell it to pull down the file. Oh, not for me. Anytime that I was doing like gold, uh, no, not Golden Abyss. Well, uh, Sly Cooper had the yeah, cross save, that was, and it was just pick up and go. Yeah, FF10, it was so though, easy. Square Enix, you had to basically save it to the cloud. Oh, I'm blaming console, Square then. I'm blaming and then Square. Download it to the Vita. <laughs> that being said, the Vita is staring at me right now. Um, Honestly, I think the best thing that anything that came out of uh, uh, Sony or PlayStation was uh, when they incorporated their cloud saving and transferring. Uh, with, when I think it was PS4. I mean, that, I mean, it's a basic feature, uh, thing, but that, but that, I think that's one of their best. I think they started that PS3. That was, I think it was near PS3. the end of PS3. Well, yeah. end of PS3, but really, it was made for P- to transfer it was everything for PS4. for PS4. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah. speaking, speaking of PlayStation, um, they basically, their CFO Hiroki Tataki, um, during their la- latest meeting basically said that one, they're not going to comment on, um, they'll refrain from making comments on the commander strategy. So they're, they're not going to talk about game pass. Right. Okay. Um, but He's saying our thinking is to have development costs, appropriate R and D investment for quality products that will improve the platform and also improve the business in the long run. AAA titles on PS5. If we distribute that on the subscription services, we may need to shrink the investment needed for that. And that will deteriorate the first party title quality. And that is our concern. So we want to make sure we spend the appropriate development costs to have solid products titles be introduced in the right manner. Um, okay. So here's not quite here's, following, but I under, but okay, I like that it. they're being concerned kinda, about I it. I kind of follow. I follow. I, I kind of follow a little bit because thing about this is, okay, Game Pass for a year is 120 bucks. Okay, we'll talk yeah. about Game Pass because we're gonna we're gonna knock Xbox here in a second, um, which Jason's not here for, which is sad because it's gonna be entertaining. But think about this: you have 120 a month or 120 a year. Break it down to 10 dollars per month, right? Okay. Yeah. You have a new game. Brand new Halo drops to Game Pass one month. I pay ten dollars. I play the game. I beat it. I'm done with it. That's it. Are you gonna beat it in a month? Oh yeah. Halo Halo Infinite was not long. I mean, I stopped playing it because it was just repetitive and rehashing Halo One. Um, but think about this. Okay, so instead you release a, a Horizon Zero or a for uh forbidden west right you release it brand new it's 70 dollars. you're recouping more of your investment in the game up front than you are trying to expect somebody to keep that ten dollars a month going true so but i I also thought with game pass that it was still temporary for those titles and you, you were expected to purchase it if you wanted to keep it for longer 
if you want to keep it beyond when they have it on Game Pass, yeah, that's yes, what I'm saying. You have to buy it. But think yeah, about but once this, you though, play it on Game Pass, why would you buy it? Why would you go buy it? I mean, if I've beaten it already and I spent only 10, 20 bucks on it, who cares? Probably you know? depends on the title, I guess. So I can I can understand that thinking, and they want to make sure that they have a return on their investment. You know, if they're going to be making banger titles, which we know PlayStation Studios pretty much as of late, everything they crank out is a hit. With those size budgets, you want to be able to recoup those expenses. But if you're going to be putting it out on a a subscription service where you're going to be banking on somebody trying to keep, you know, basically saying, hey, we got to at least minimally keep them invested in the service for at least seven months. They're going to, they're going to rethink the quality or even rethink doing a AAA title. Or even the length of the game. Yeah. Correct. I mean, even then though, shorter games, I mean, you still have a higher budget though. I mean, so I, I understand where Sony's coming from this and Honestly, it's their business model, and I'm not going to fret over it because chances are, from a first-party perspective, am I going to buy anything that Gorilla puts out? Yes, because I'm a huge <laughs> fan of Gorilla and all the work they do. <laughs> am I going to buy day one title of Naughty Dog? Yes. Insomniac? Yes, because Spider-Man 2, Wolverine, you know. Um, Bend? You know, I mean, we'll see on that one because when I initially, when we initially played Days Gone, I wasn't, you know, I didn't like it because it was buggy as all heck. Um, now it's, now it's patched fully and guess what's gotten installed on my system. And I'm going to okay. give it a, another shot now that it's fully up and running and fixed and it's where they intended you're it. Gonna to be. Um, you're so going to enjoy it. So yeah, so you're going to have fun with the hearts. So it's installed. Um mm. So those are those are studios that are you and Sony Santa Monica, right? God of War, you know, you, yeah. you know that's going to be a banger. So, would do you really want to sacrifice their budgets, which would therefore make the game less less quality in their eyes, on the on the expectation or hope that somebody stays around for seven months? Mm-hmm. That's that's where I I, I under, that's where I look at their logic. Mm-hmm. No, I, I get it too. Too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Microsoft is all about subscription services right now. So they're all about getting people in the door. Except for when that door doesn't work, <laughs> like this past weekend. Um, people so were going crazy. Let's 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 talk about that. So first first news was Starfield got postponed to 2023. Really? Um why so bethesda came out and stated uh we've made the decision to delay the launches of redfall and starfield to the first half of 2023 the okay. teams at arcane austin who's doing redfall and bethesda game studios who's doing starfield have incredible ambitions for their games and we want to ensure that you receive the best most polished versions of them we want to thank everyone for their excitement for redfall and starfield that energy is a huge part of what inspires all of us every day and drives our own excitement for what we are creating we can't wait to share our first deep dive into the gameplay for both Redfield and Starfield soon. Thank you for your support. Um, a lot of fans took to blasting Phil Spencer and Xbox. And I get Phil Spencer. He's always trying to play that diplomat, you know, and kind of be inclusive. I think he's missing the mark in supporting his team, though, because he did tweet out, these decisions are hard on teams making the games and our fans, while I fully support giving teams time to release their, these great games when they are ready, we hear the feedback, delivering quality and consistency is expected. We will continue to work to better meet those expectations. I don't Dang. want crunch. I don't want crunch for any team whatsoever. And to me, that sounds like, well, if we set a date because everyone's going to get all ticked off because now Xbox does not have and ex- any real exclusives or energy now the mm. rest of the year that they're now going to make sure that they push to get these games out. And I, and I feel they're going to end up crunching. Probably. But I, what I'm confused Probably. about is why are they needing to crunch? I mean, 
this game has been in development for so long. Well, no, I think when we first got a teaser over uh, over four years ago. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going on with this game. I'm more looking at Phil Spencer's comments, though, as a long run. Right. Any games that are getting ready to come out because if they set a date. okay, prime example, Halo. Okay, they had they tried to get that together. They released it and said, hey, here's when it's coming out. It looked like absolute crap and had to be delayed for an entire year. I feel like we keep getting release dates or promised release dates during alpha. Yeah, I think like this, this, I really feel like, like, granted, I don't know. I've never been in the business. I don't know the industry, but I mean, like, I don't feel like you should be promising something during alpha when you have massive amounts of testings before beta, and then you're still going through a ton of yeah. UAT in order to get, uh, near get goal, ready for release. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, th- I think a lot of a lot of these companies aren't getting the the hint. You know, Nintendo got the hint. They said holiday 2022. <laughs> holiday that gives them a three month yeah. window. Yeah, I, like same thing. Uh, and, but I mean, I'm I'm not. Too- How many no, games don't, does- don't even put a year. Just say holiday, and yeah, you, just get, say you holiday. get to guess which holiday right? it's yeah, yeah. gonna be. Hey, I mean, but, uh, do one on Juneteenth. Okay I'm, I'm okay <laughs> do one on Juneteenth because it still gives me time to get a Xbox. I I think I'm gonna want to play that game. That that game looks very interesting. I still say you should get a but- PC and just do Game Pass that way then. No Xbox. <laughs> just get a PC, dude. Switch over. I mean, Switch over. Do it. I'll help you build it. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a Todd Howard game, so it's gonna be buggy as crap when it launches. So true. Just saying. It, it, it'll only but, take two hours to to set up the next patch. <laughs> but I think a lot of these studios though are basing these games on their fiscal years, right? And a yeah. lot of budgets are made based on those game sales being done, their loans, whatever they need to get, i.e. C D Project Red they were coming due on their loans and they had to get it out. They had to get money mm-hmm. in to, to cover it. So I think that is inherently what's wrong with the gaming industry is that we get these dates and then they need to, I don't think there's anything wrong with dates, but they need to be more accurate with what they're doing. Like, like if you're in UAT window. of beta, I would say a year from that should be good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not even, I think they just need to, if they're going to do anything, they're going to let's set a target window and not a date. Right. Because then you have the, the delays and everything like CD project red did with cyberpunk, even with halo, right? Look at how many pissed yeah. off people there were that they were expecting yeah. a title here. And now all of a sudden they got to wait six, 12 months down the road for it to come out or be fixed or whatever. And I think that's the inherent problem though is that we get these specific dates game. I mean, honestly, the culture has changed for game making COVID, Mm -hmm. you know, for better or worse, really messed things up. And I think honestly, if, if the fans are that toxic that they think that they should own the lives of the developers to the point where they have to stick to a date, then they should make it themselves. Go make it themselves. And as a studio, don't worry about them. Make sure, yeah. your, empl- make sure your employees are, are taken care of. Mm-hmm. You know, make sure everybody's safe and sound, healthy, both, you know, mind, physically, and everything. And just release the game when it's ready. Mm-hmm. Because Absolutely. as we've talked about on this podcast numerous times, our, our backlog on games is long Massive. and very distinguished. Right now. <laughs> I mean... So I have plenty to do, you know, between I mean, now. And like- I, I still had a, I don't remember. Oh, Assassin's Creed syndicate that never got the seal broken after six years. <laughs> and I traded Dude. it in. <laughs> oh, eh, I like syndicate. I didn't that like syndicate. I, that was the one that we tried at E3 Hold and on. it was not that great. Yeah. There's only one reason I liked syndicate. Cause we got one. the backpack. Cause we got the cool ass backpack. Yes, that's it. true too. <laughs> um, but I felt that Assassin's Creed went with Syndicate went to kind of Batman with it, with the whole risk gauntlet and you know, mm-hmm. all that. But but let's let's kind of talk about the the big elephant in the room that happened, which was Xbox Live experienced a major outage. It one, it is rare for Xbox to have an outage of this magnitude. It's been a while. 
um, and it revolved around DRM and it would not allow you to access anything that was cloud-based. But mm. here's the other caveat. It's a lot of cloud-based stuff. It also, hold on. It also, <laughs> right. It also impacted quite a few players ability to play the games that were installed on their local machines. That's because a lot of not the, cloud-based. Isn't that, isn't that because a lot of their license keys are still cloud-based anyways? Yes. Okay, that's, that's what I thought. That's the thing. That that's also um, why that's also why uh, you can chalk that up, Jerry, for a, a win for the disc side. <laughs> I was just about to say, baby. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you know, well, but here's the thing though: is PlayStation has it built into their to ecosystem, the yeah. even on digital games. That as long as you're signed in, you're like you're using your actual machine that is registered as your primary to your account. Mm-hmm. It's all the DRMs already on your on your system. Oh, okay, you so it downloads the DRM too. Yeah. So basically, if I did not have internet hooked up to my PS5 right now, I could still play Horizon right. and God of War and all of those. Um, the only ones that may be an issue are any ones that are part of PlayStation Plus. And if it's not, if it didn't check in beforehand to see when my expiration date was PlayStation, for PlayStation Plus was. Oh, gotcha. Because remember, on those free yeah, games, it has they, to check it, your it has to online check that status piece. and everything. Yeah. But any game that I have actually bought, Horizon, Arkham series, yeah, you, can, you can games, start up. I can fire those up with no problem. Yeah. But the problem here was with Xbox is they you could not play your bought games unless so, they were physical, right? That's crazy. You could um. The physicals you sh- you should have been able to play with those unless there was an online checking component for those games to allow mm. you to play them. Great. So, yep. to me, I-, I think this this does go to that that conversation: physical versus digital. Um, as long as I have no problem playing my digital games offline, I'm cool. With I'm fine mm-hmm. with digital. But for those that are Xbox, because they have such a cloud focus, I think. They really need to fix that. Granted, they're saying, "Yeah, we need yeah. to patch in to help prevent this." Yeah, but that's that's a big, dude, that's a big problem. When yeah, it's a big problem, you're predicating your entire business model on Game Pass, which has massive cloud components to it. Mm-hmm. Better make sure your stuff works, works well, and doesn't have a problem with DRM, and stays working for a long time. Stays working. <laughs> um, the key and, the, and that's there. the thing is, like, even my Switch, right? If that thing's not online, any of my all my digital games, I can play them. Not a problem. Yeah. So as long as it's downloaded. What, as long as it's downloaded onto my console, and, you know, it's good to go. That really is a big like misstep. That se- that seems like like a day one type of thing that like you need to do. I mean, yeah, like why wouldn't you consider like offline of play in like, your plan? Like, yeah. That should definitely be a big uh, thing. Especially for well, purchase. Consider. Think like about this. Own though. games, like think about it. What did they do with Xbox One at launch? It was going to require a check-in of the console. Oh yeah, once every twenty-four hours for you to be able to play your games. Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah that is right. right. So I mean, Jesus, man. I mean, come on. They've been they've been dealing with this debacle for a because didn't because wasn't that in? If I remember correctly, that was in lines with the whole sharing thing as well is why it had the to check infamous, in so and, and, and that's was, why we saw in e3 with sony so it's like oh here's <laughs> how <laughs> game sharing you. should be <laughs> most, go, Jerry. one of the most infamous <gasps> thank you e3 videos <laughs> adam voice <laughs> who's now with iron galaxy and um yoshi it's just going here and then that was the thing is Xbox One was if you wanted to be able to share a game or take your game over to a friend's house and play it over there, you had to be friends with them for 30 plus days. And then you had the 24 hour check in for your console. And it was like, I mean, I don't want to be used by you guys if I don't know you for less than 30 days. You ain't getting my games. <laughs> you got to be in for the long haul. Invest a, a, in me, sir. Too much. Invest. That just seems like too much of like, the need for control i i, I don't know yeah yeah I, like I, microsoft has had nothing but mis- missteps when it comes to those I, I features i don't go as far as that it's a matter of control i i 
do say that it's check in every it, it's, 24 it, it, hours well i mean not you, no, have, you you're, you have to be friends with someone for 30 days like. but that's kind of a thing to help prevent things being taken advantage of and them losing a boatload of money from it because you know it's anybody oh. like if you make it super easy to take advantage everybody's going to take advantage of it people take advantage of things as it is now right now even okay. with even even with game say or game sharing with playstation hey. matt hey. does it himself hey netflix <laughs> stop it <laughs> okay netflix too but still like you gotta admit from if you take no. it from a business okay. standpoint if you're gonna try to make money for your business you're gonna try to reduce the uh eligibility to take advantage and um make deals we, at, for yourself we do not share games anymore in this household okay i pay yeah. for two playstation plus i play i pay for two playstation pluses because the other way was eva's system was the primary mine had to be the secondary thing is as mine being the secondary it you was couldn't required, play your games offline it was required to check in and, and I you had all those internet problems like, out in yes. Virginia too. <laughs> so immediately I was like, you know what? Nope. I am paying for a second subscription, so I don't have to worry about this. So it, yeah. Thanks Verizon. Oh, was it Verizon that you had for your provider? Dude, that was, that was the time. Remember when we had, when we were recording the podcast and I kept dropping all the time. Yeah, because somebody was, was on, on Net, Netflix no, was, streaming it something. Had nothing, it was not even that. Is come to find out, is because they buried the gigabit fiber uh -huh. box up in the closet at the front of the apartment. Oh, so you have so much that's, obstruction, and I mean, you've got you've was. got all the water that's going through the water lines, through the walls, and breaking up the all signal the, there. All the breakers. Oh. Jeez. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we went back to some, Comcast, which was, they didn't have fiber. It was just coax, smart right? engineering there. And we put that box right in the middle of the apartment. We didn't have a problem ever since. So yeah. So thanks for this. Is, this is where I hear any kind of listener that is at least a PC gamer saying you should have hardwired, you should have hardwired. <laughs> But really, granted, you want me to, granted, you I'm want not me one to hardwire? talk. I'm not one to talk because I don't hardwire. I, I, I am do. on this massive ass, hard ass PC, and I still do oh, Wi Fi. I'll, I'll I will never, like, at, <laughs> at home, I will never do Wi Fi. I'm hybrid. I, I, everything's on Ethernet right now. I freaking love it. I even so, got a splitter for more Ethernets to connect everything else. And this is where he goes. I from love it too. I was like, oh man, 100 so megabits cool. down to 25 when she starts splitting it. Um, yeah, but everything's turned off though. Yeah. See, mine's. <laughs> so it's no purpose then. Right? <laughs> no, no, it's, no turn purpose. It it's totally um, connected, but I, it's turned I, off. Yeah, it's I, don't turned need, off. I don't need multiple things on, man. I, I, we don't need all that crap. I'm, There's a lot of power. I'm uh, hybrid. One at a time. <laughs> yep, I'm hybrid. So yeah, go. we've got the main router coming in downstairs. Okay. Um, okay. We have symmetrical gigabit here in Longmont, which Longmont Trade is one of the top 20 places in the country to work because of the internet. Um, but I have a wire mesh or I have a wireless Wi Fi mesh web upstairs in the office, to which my PS5 is hardwired into that. So I'm kind of running a hybrid Ethernet, and my PS5 is getting 150 megabits per second or higher nice i don't know if i count that as hybrid i would still count that as wireless because it is mesh well but the thing is though it's <laughs> technically not going, just being very it, technical well yeah but it's it's mesh but then i'm hardwired into the mesh instead of doing Wi-Fi, which is receiving a wireless <laughs> signal <laughs> hey you know what as long as i'm getting 150 gigabits or megabits per second at least off my ps5 i don't care yeah it was and, lower than that when i did the uh just doing a wi-fi off the, the and map, i so. and for anybody that's listening that needs that kind of thing i would actually recommend doing it that way too don't do the other suggestions of the power line e ethernet over power line awful oh. i've done i've tried when it so many times it is oh my god i hate you on. no stop it <laughs> no do the perfect cast come on do it right now <laughs> I don't know it. I don't remember it. <laughs> now I need Ladies to see that movie right now. 
Now I gotta buy that friggin' album because that's the All only these way Gen you Zers have listening to us don't know what the hell we're talking about. Which is funny is Eva had that same complaint. She's like, the only way I could get that song. It's is stupid. I'd find that's the so album. stupid. Why can't you just buy the two songs like everyone clearly wants from that album? But no, you have to buy the whole album. Oh, really? On iTunes, yeah, you have to buy the entire album. To get oh my God. Both Powerline songs all both say album uh, album only. only. Oh my God. So annoying. But now I want to. So buy that. that, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, Gerard is no longer known as the beanied one. He's now Goof Troop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's good, dude. That Thanks, was man. good. I like that one. <laughs> dude, Theo, I almost, Gosh. I almost resurrected a nickname for you tonight that hasn't been uttered in a hundred and twenty episodes. What? The adorable. <laughs> Dark Maybe helmet. <laughs> oh, okay. Dark. I was gonna say if it was the adorable, I think it's I don't I think it's less than 120 episodes. <laughs> no, um, I've been working on our I've been working on the website and I want to apologize to the listeners out there. I did promise that said, hey, by this time this week, I'd have all the profiles built, but uh, life. You're followed into the gaming industry now. You're giving dates, dude. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm a, but here's the thing is. I'm holding myself accountable and apologizing. <laughs> um, no, life is just, you know, life is life. And I focus a little bit on spending time with the kids and, and whatnot. And absolutely work work's been hectic. We've got one of my team that is our overnight person, which um, Robbie thoughts going out to you and your family um, as you're dealing with issues with your uncle. Um, hope mm-hmm. everything comes out all right there. Um, but, you know, we're down a person. So I got called middle of the night <laughs> the other night at, you know, 11 o'clock car time to go, Hey, we got a call going. Um, so, uh, we have 75 episodes done. Um, so we're getting things submitted, built, filled out and everything. So, um, everybody's tagged so far up through those 75 episodes. So you still can go on to crashing click on the contributors and guest lists and see all of those. Um, but I also did some gaming. Like I've oh actually boy. done some gaming. Nice. So what you been playing? Horizon. <laughs> um, <gasps> and Horizon. Um, yes. I now have, uh, I got Demeter, uh, who is the, the third one of Gaia to go get. Sweet. Okay. Um, I now have the ability to unlock the metal flowers. So I've been backtracking, oh, yeah. going, unlocking all of those. Um, That's okay. pretty much what I've been doing. So forget there's six Gaia's that we have to collect, right? No. Six pieces of Gaia? There's three. So far, there's the three, um, which Because I thought the seed powerful. showed six. No, so there's Gaia, and then there's uh, the three. It was Poseidon, Demeter, and then the third one, which makes Gaia... Yeah, the other ones were uh, were um, corrupted and, and incomplete. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep. And then um, that makes her powerful enough to go absorb what is Hephaestus or whatever his Hades or whatever its name is that's Mm. wreaking havoc. Um, So, yeah, so I've been playing just a ton of Horizon and Ace Combat. I've gotten back in Ace. Oh, yeah. Got got a little motivation Um, lately, huh? uh, Well, of course, Top Gun's coming out in two weeks yes indeed um you know i do have my f-14s out um sadly i'll but, be uh, in florida when i'm down right because i'm going good luck on that tournament baby thanks yeah. sir but uh anyway so no uh, i've been doing some ace combat i just did some um in-game photography with flying the f-18 block three version which is um the f FA-18F, which is what is used in Top Gun for okay. some of the scenes and whatnot. So, um, yeah, I got back into playing that. Was playing online campaign. Or not online campaign, but online multiplayer. Mm. Um, cool. I got booted from a game after it finished. Oh, no. So, in Ace Combat 6 multiplayer, or rather Ace Combat 7, rather, multiplayer, right? You have the option to lock down your lobby that doesn't allow anybody to jump in mid-match. Okay. Or B, you can let them spawn in hot. Okay. So I happen to spawn into a lobby hot. Okay. My spawn point 
was about a hundred clicks away from three fighters. And the way I have mine configured is for quicker lock on for my special weapons. Okay. My Tomcat was equipped with the in-game missiles that allow you to lock on to eight targets at once. <laughs> so I spawned you in. You just did that three times. Like no, no, not even. Peek-a-boo. Not even. I locked, I jumped in, locked on, dropped a full salvo, and dropped three of them. Oh shit. Oh, I'm sure oh, I'm sure they were pissed. And the the, the lobby head was Pissed. Uh, because then I turned around and but, shot him down right after he's but that's what again. I mean come on man like that was a, that was luck so he, he kicked awesome. me from the lobby I'm like dude that's stupid I'm sorry I mean like yeah if you're not gonna if you're gonna be pissed about it don't set up your lobby yep. that way that exactly, and right? for the most part like when you come in hot like that most most of the time you're you get killed right off yeah or oh, you yeah. don't have that kind of luck majority like majority of the time awesome. i'm surprised i didn't get shot down yeah with, with me dropping yeah. into but that's that awesome suit. like straight but, out three kills like that's oh yeah awesome. it was like it locked it was like ding, 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 and i'm like, <laughs> <"Koom."> like sweet <laughs> i'm doing great i just got in <laughs> and then the guy decided to uh the lobby head decided to when he spawned went straight for me and he locked on launched his missile i ditched down in and pulled like almost a jester and went for the hard deck <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and, then, and then banked back out of it and he wanted to try and go in yeah. on a nose to nose and i had already been swinging and tracking him and i already had him locked <laughs> and oh, i dropped nice. three missiles onto him so yeah I, I mean don't start none and i fly the jolly rogers the VF-103, <laughs> their paint scheme on my 14, F-14, so it's kind of <laughs> entertaining. So, But no, um, Horizon is getting... Uh, dude, the side quests are getting really good. Oh, yeah? Really good. The story is really picking up. Um, oh, so good, for those that are having a lot of the side stories I've done it, are just lackluster. For those that are having trouble sticking with it, just stick with it a little while longer because it does pick up. Um, I am now 85-ish hours now into it. But what was your percentage done? 70 okay 75 something okay. like that sweet but i still have like the whole san francisco area to unlock so so okay. um yeah i've been I mean, really yeah, i've been then, really like i've been doing exactly what you were just starting to do was uh i've been doing those flowers i've been going back and like doing a resweep where like i need to just get back to the main story yeah i need to start and getting then, back to the story and then switch sports then playing volleyball Oh sweet! So yeah. you you guys picked it up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we talked about that last week. Cause, yeah, because uh, Co- uh, yeah. Cody beat him at Badman. Yeah, remember? Oh, that's right. That's a right. Four year old beat me at at Badman on Switch Sports. I'm admitting that's that. why he's playing volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's another reason why I'm playing volleyball. Of I course, mean, heck, but it's I mean, my... it's one of the reasons. <laughs> so that's 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 your sport. That's what you play. It is my sport. All right, Jerry, what you been playing, sir? Yeah. Uh, I've just been hitting uh, Horizon a little bit here and there. Um, for some reason, this uh, I've been just kind of like uh, emotionally tired from work. So it's just mm. like I've just been getting getting home, just trying to get a few things done, get organized, and then I'm uh, just trying to be productive this week a little bit. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, yeah, so I just I, I just hit up Horizon a little, just a little bit. And, and uh, I'm going to deep dive into it back on, like, I think Friday I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it hard. So I, I might have to call you out here with the productivity. Uh, uh-huh. Is your bed clean of clothes that need to be folded? Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> yes and, okay, yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, I folded all of my clothes. I just have the, the stuff that I have to hang. So I'm, gonna, I'm hanging that. All right, all right. I fo- okay. I folded. I'm done. So that's now a win. Start- that's yeah, a yeah. win. That's I a win. Got to hang my stuff. Proud of you, sir. Thank you. His no. <laughs> so basically, what we're saying is is that Jerry's room looks like the inside of a Winnebago. Oh no, no, I wouldn't go that far. My room's worse. You just see the nice part. <laughs> it's all on the other side of the camera. No, Lone Star. Lone Star and his Winnebago. I can totally go for a man. 
that took <laughs> that Toyota Tacoma uh, Taco Tacozilla man. Um, I'm still looking at that thing. I was oh, like, oh I started was... reading the Uncharted novel. Uh, I didn't even oh, know there was called? an Uncharted novel. Or, yeah, it's called The Fourth Labyrinth. Actually, it's a Nathan Drake story. So I'm a couple oh, chapters sweet. into that because Ready, Ready Player Two is done. Nice. Oh, nice. How did it end? Was it was it a, overall was it solid or? Um, it's a solid B B plus. I'm okay with that. That's, That's not bad for a That's sequel. Yeah. A sequel. It, yeah. No, I mean there was there were some times I was just like, eh, but overall there's some really great points. Um, I love the '80s aspects. Um, we talked about this last week with you know the John Hughes references, the Prince references, mm-hmm. uh, Lord of the Rings references, specifically to the Cimmerillion. So, um, the first age and talking about that. So, no, it was good. Um, it leaves it wide open for a third one. I honestly, I want Ernest Klein to just let it go. Mm. Just let it be done with Ready Player Two and be done with it because outside of that, I think you just start getting really off the rails. So, mm. um, and I think, and I think it makes more sense with it being Player One and Player Two in the titles. It yeah. just kind of fits let better. So, but. Theo, let's put you on the spot. What have you been playing? Um, besides what i was playing on stream tonight uh actually (laughs) nothing i haven't been playing no way Uh, so so since i've been actively looking for a new job (laughs) um i did not hear that here (laughs) right (laughs) never theo looking for a new job (laughs) i thought he loved his job no um uh, I've co- uh, I've been coming more to the realization of the need for a portfolio. Um, so I've been working towards having a web portfolio to showcase my stuff. Um, so that way I can get a, a dream job if I can. Sweet. Equals some parenthesis A1 plus B1 parenthesis. <laughs> that's his, <laughs> that's his portfolio. <laughs> Yes, no. and it's, it's, it's in many different languages, not just Excel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, so real quick before we close things out, I do want to make some announcements. So like we talked about at the top of the show, Jason will be returning. We miss you, Jason. Yeah. We, we miss Lions, man. He just third, had a schedule I mean, change with his job, so yep. we had to rearrange so, things. Damn it, job. Oh, yeah. Stop interfering with so our fun. With, <laughs> with that, uh, he will be back May 31st. Which will also be our new uh, new night, um, starting on the thirty first, which we will be doing Tuesday evenings, um, live here on Twitch, um, same time, nine same Eastern, time, different day, Pacific, just different day. Because we miss Jason, we want him to be back with us, um, so we are going to just modify the date. Um, from a guest announcements perspective, uh, next week, uh, Thursday night. Austin Lee Matthews, yes, voice of Roche, uh, creator, director of Megaton Girl, will be joining us yay, yay. Um, in celebration of them finishing off season one of Megaton Girl. Sweet. Yes. Um, so it'll be uh, the final episode will be airing, uh, dropping a couple of days before we record next week. So that'll be great to have him on. Um, the following week, uh, so that week before the 31st, we are going to be taking off in terms of live recording. And that is because we have another guest from Insomniac that'll be joining us. So uh, of course, like we did with Mary Kenny, we've got to basically record it, ship it off to Sony, let them approve it, and then we'll air it and, and be out as a bonus episode. So um, we'll be, we won't be live that week, but we will have a great episode for you guys. Um, and then we are working on, um, someone from Ben studio as well. So we've working through the approval process on that one. And then unfortunately just want to make an announcement that, um, Samantha Kelly will not be able to join us, uh, for a little while for the foreseeable future, just because life. And you know what? She wants to be able to take care of her family and focus on that and whatnot. So, you know what? I've already told her the invitation is always out there when she has that time, she feels she's back and ready. Um, you know, but that's what it is. So, Take um, your time. Come, come whenever you're all about that life. Yeah. Yep. 
So with that, um, I do want to thank everybody for crashing game night with us tonight. Um, I know it is a very chaotic time in the world right now. You have everything going on in Ukraine, which honestly, I wish Russia would just give it up and leave and then Ukraine can be Ukraine, but they want to do more. You know, it was announced uh, just the other day that Ukraine is just the very bottom of the barrel of their ambitions and that they have more ambitions beyond Ukraine, which is kind of scary being that Russia has the most nuclear weapons in the world. So there's that piece. And then we have what's going on in the United States, which there was a vote yesterday and Roe v. Wade was not codified, which is not surprising um, given the, the scenario and everything. So there is a lot of a lot of things going on right now in the states, protest wise and whatnot. So I just want to say say this, guys, is that Jerry covers this all the time. We we just need to be better towards everybody, Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ, and we need and we, regardless of personal beliefs, we will we will always support our our cousins, our aunts sisters, mothers, whatever it is, friends in their right. Um, let's take it down a notch though, because there's a lot of people that are attacking women right now and it's not right. And let's, let's support everybody as best as we can be better to each other. Let's work together to make things better for everybody regardless. So with that, if you like what you heard, Head on over to crashinggamenight.com, catch some extra back episodes. Make sure to hit the subscribe button on the platform of your choice that you're listening to. And as always, be excellent to each other and stay frosty. That is the word of the day. Everybody, let's everybody let us come together. Let's everybody let's show a little bit more compassion. Everybody, let's lend a helping hand when if help is needed. Uh, once again, let's everyone show support to these uh, uh, these groups. Uh, Black Lives Matter, stop the Asian hate. Let's support our women, uh, our, our 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 females, our ladies need our support right now because yeah, uh, lots going on. Handmaid's and, uh, Tale is here. <laughs> it's very it's it's it, it, we're in a crazy time and and let's support yeah. our lgbtq plus community you know they're going through it as well uh we need to yeah we need to do better and we need to just try and be patient and just show a little bit of compassion to everyone uh let's stop fighting yep. and let, let's just try and come together mm -hmm. um thank you everyone for listening thank you for uh for watching uh i love you all and please uh spread some more love and compassion out there please and uh jerry thank tonight, you nerds tonight i'm gonna let you say jason's oh, usual and, uh... one line <laughs> intro for theo my man theo <laughs> My man. I mean, I we still have to at least give out the good old be kind rewind. rewind. But thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Till next time, TTFN. Ta ta for now. Good night, everybody.